Before actually solving that problem, just a reminder about exponential graphs. The graph of the basic exponential equation, which would look like this, where the variable x is actually raised into the power position, calling it an exponential equation. The graph of that would look either like this, if a was a number greater than 1, or like this, if a was a number less than 1. In both cases, the graph would intersect the y-axis at 1, because anything to the power 0 is on the y-axis when x is 0, anything to the power 0 is 1. So both of these graphs intersect at 1. So this exponential equation would represent something growing exponentially. This would represent something decaying exponentially. So putting a couple of numerical examples, that could be an example of y equals something like 2 to the power x. So it would start at 1. Then when x is 1, the answer would be 2 to the power 1, which is 2. And when x is 2, the answer would be 2 to the power 2, which is 4, and so on. And this could be a good example of y equals, when x is a frac when a is a fraction, sorry, a half to the power x. Instead of writing a half to the power x, although do just now, when x is 0, anything to the 0 is 1. When x is 1, a half to the power 1 would be a half. When x is 2, a half to the power 2 would be 1 squared over 2 squared, which is a quarter, which is why it's dropping away. But another way of writing this would be, since a half is 2 to the negative 1, that could be written as y equals 2 to the negative x. So that when you see a positive index, it means you've got a growth equation, and when you see a negative in the index, it means you've got a decay equation. So in this problem, in which it's been written as mt equals m naught e to the negative 0.02t, this would represent a decay equation because I've got a negative. If I was to draw the graph of this, it would look like that. So let's just put that together and visualize this. Here's the equation, mt equals m naught e to the negative 0.02t, where, as it says in the question, mt stands for the amount the mass after a certain time has elapsed. M0 stands for the initial mass when you started the timing. E represents the base of the exponential. This is the factor that governs it. This is the factor that controls the rate of growth or decay. And T is the time elapsed since the mass was that M0. Putting it into a graph, it would look like this. First part would be, notice it isn't y and x, it's m and t. This point here, which would normally be at 1 on an exponential graph, would be at 1, just for the exponential part of it, but it's been multiplied by m0, so that represents the initial value of the mass. And then as time progresses, the mass falls. And in this question, you have to find how long it takes for it to fall to a certain value. This value, just call it mt just now. You have to say, how long would it take until it drops to gets to here? What would be that time that it would take to get to this value? Now, I'll put the actual numbers in. Here it said it started at 40 and it's dropping down to 28. And the question is, how long would it take to drop from 40 grams down to 28 grams? Where this time is in hours. And you to give the answer, correct to the nearest minute. Well, first step would be substitute the values in. You don't, of course, need to draw a graph. That's just there as a visual representation of what's happening. I've got this exponential graph. That's its equation there. Putting the numbers in, it says what? It drops to 28. It started at 40. That's just a standard. Put the numbers in the right place. M0 was 40. MT was 28. The function was e to the negative 0 0.02 times whatever the time is. And so time is the only thing you don't know. Here's an equation. There's only one thing you don't know, so you should be able to work your way back until you find that. We'll just take another step to the side now. If this question had said this instead, 
If it said, find the mass after 10 hours, I'd have done this. Well, that means I want the mass, I don't know that, but it started at 40. My function is e to the negative 0 0.02, and I know the time would have been 10, so that's just a straightforward calculation. There's no unknowns at all in there. E is not an unknown, it's a function. Just like sine of something, it's just a function. You would just press those buttons in your calculator. The correct order would be starting with T, although you could just type that in in one go, of course it would work. But I need these steps because I need to be able to undo them. It'd be 40 times e to the, do this multiplication first, 10 times it, so the point moves forward, 0 0.2. The next part would be calculate that. Well, that would just be E, so selecting E, that's shift LN. Don't forget for the negative to use the change of sign negative rather than subtract. 0.2, that then gives you 0 0.8187, then multiply that by 40, and you get 32.749 etc. grams if it were. And the only reason I went through this particular example was just to show the individual steps it takes to get to the answer. You could of course just press all those button one, buttons in one go and you'll get that. That's not what the problem was. The problem is, what happens if once you've got to the answer, you'd forgotten or you didn't know what the number was to start with? That's what this problem is. It tells you the answer, but you don't know what it was to start with. How long would it take to get there? I'd have to be able to undo those steps. So you can see from here the order it would take place in. If I put this back down here again, I've got 40 e to the negative 0.02t, and I think, what was the order of operations I went through to get 28? Well, the first step was, you start with T, and you multiply, circle them off, you start with T, which is what you want, and you multiply it by negative 0.02, so it's changed to something else. You then find E to the power of that. And once you've found E to the power of that, you finally multiply it by 40, which means that T is buried deep within these operations, it's like the layers of an onion. You'll need to cut through the layers of this onion to get back to T. And the only way you can cut through them is to undo the layers that were overlying it. So the correct order here would be, now this first part's easy, what was that 40 again? That 40 was multiplying. So step one is going to be divide by 40. Step two is going to have to be, and this is the only tricky one really, I'm going to have to undo e to the power of whatever. I've got to do undo e to a certain power, e to the n. Because once I've undone that, I'll be down to this part, and the last part will just be divide by that negative 0 0.02. So the main problem here then is, how do you undo an exponential? You need to know the inverse of it. I'll clear this space. So, if I had an exponential, just use any general base like this, you need to know how to undo that part there. So I've dropped down just to what that n was in the first place. The inverse of exponential is logarithm of the same base. If I didn't want this a, that base of the exponential on that side, you would take it over and do the logarithm base A of it on the other side. That removes it. For instance, if I had 3 to the n equals 50, and I couldn't remember what that n was, I need to get rid of this 3 to the power of it. That's an exponential. It's not a fixed power. It's a fixed base. And the inverse of that would be n equals. To get rid of that 3 from this side, it goes across as a log 3. Log base 3 of 50. Now, if you didn't have that in your calculator, this calculator does because it has that button, log, and you can choose the base. I could type that in just by using this button. Log, choose my base, 3, put the number I want to operate on, 50, press equals, and I can get the answer. It must have been 3.56, I'll put down. That one must have been 3 to the power, 3.56. If you don't have that button, and you've only got these two to choose from, log or log n, which means log base e, and that means log base 10. Then what you would do instead would be take a logarithm of both sides, choose one of the ones in your calculator, log base 10, log base e. I'll go for log base 10. 
take log base 10 of that side, take log base 10 of that side. That keeps it balanced because you've done the same things to both sides. The handy thing about taking the logarithm of some expression with a power is that power can now pop out to the front. So I've got n times log base 10 of 3 is the same as log base 10 of 50. And then finally to get n, I would just do my log base 10 of 50, which is just a number. Take this number here, across and divide log base 10 of 3. Notice I'm not doing the inverse, I'm just treating it as a single number. This is now a number, there's no variables in it. Take that across and divide, press those buttons. <coughs> so on the calculator, using the fraction button if you like, I've got log base 10 of 50. Just be careful with all the brackets so you get a, a syntax error. Over log base 10 of 3. Maybe close that bracket and take it out of the way. And you get the same answer, 3.56. So back to here then, undo e to the n will mean doing log base e. Or if you like, log base n written the other way. An example being, if e to some power gave me, or might well use the same 50, how could I get what n was? Undo the exponential, undo exponential, inverses, log base e, either log e or ln. Log e 50, which is just the ln button, ln 50, and that would be 3.912. So e to the power 3.912 should give me 50. Back to this then, back to solving this problem here. To get to t, because it's buried within the side, you'll have to dig your way through. You'll have to dig your way down through these levels. So I'll have to get rid of the 40. Undo it, divide. Get rid of the e, the exponential. Undo it, log. Get rid of this negative 0 0.02. Again, it was multiplying, divide, and finally you'll have reached t. I don't know why I aimed off a little bit. I'll have to dig a bit to the side. And then you'll have t. So, simply MJs, this is what we do then. Here was the initial statement of the problem. We've inserted the values for M0 and MT. This graph, of course, is just here as a, a representation of what it would look like. It's not necessary at all. To find what T is, you need to get rid of the 40, the E, and the negative 0 0.02, and you'll be left with T. Get rid of the 40 first. What's it doing in this side? It's multiplying. Take it over and divide. I think at the same time, I'll just reverse that. E to the negative 0 0.02T equals 28. That 40 will go across and divide, so that's over 40. Now, quite often, you would just leave it that way for the next stage, because that keeps it exact. But that actually divides out quite nicely. That actually divides out quite nicely into 0 0.7, which is exact. Otherwise, I'd probably just have left it like that. That's the 40 out of the way. Now, the E. You don't need to apply the logarithms to both sides because you've got this in your calculator already. You just need to remember. Inverse of exponential, that is when you've got some number and the variable's been raised up to a power rather than an ordinary looking term like x squared. That's not an exponential. The inverse of that too would just be square root. It's an exponential when it's the other way around, when it's a fixed number at the base and the variable's up on top. That makes an exponential. So the inverse of exponential would be log. That's the only tricky stage. How do you get rid of that e? Well, get rid of it just now, in the trivial sense that, that well, it's gone, so I'm just left with this part. How does it appear as its inverse? Inverse of exponential is log. You can write log base e, or you can write ln, whichever you like. So it'll be that acting on the other side, acting on the 0 0.7. Just the same as when you had sine x equals 0 0.5, and I don't want the sine, so it disappears to the other side as its inverse. Inverse sine acting on the other side. And then the last stage will be, now what's left, this negative, that's not a subtract, that's a negative, that's an adjective, that describes that number, it's a negative number. I've got negative 0 0.02 multiplying t, so I'll take it across and divide the other side. So divided by negative 0 0.02, and then start working it out. So into your calculator, it's a fraction. You can use that fractions button if you like. Log base e is the ln of 
0.7, remember to close your brackets so you may get a syntax error, divided by negative 0.02, that's a negative, not a subtract, so use the negative button, 0.02, just safely take it out of the way, press equals, and you get 17.8337, etc., which is the number of hours. If it says to the nearest minute, then I'll just have to be careful when I'm changing hours into minutes. I've obviously got 17 hours. There's 17 whole hours. So there's definitely 17 hours, and this is the fraction of an hour. I've got 0 0.8337, etc., of an hour. If I want to change it into minutes, every hour becomes 60 minutes. Multiply it by 60 and change the decimal part of the hour. The simple way to do that would just be subtract the 17 to leave all of the decimal, the 0.833, multiply it by 60, and you're left with 50.024, etc., and that'll be the minutes part of it. So if it says, what is it to the nearest minute? It'll be 17 hours, and 50.0 is 50 minutes. If you wanted to go further and take it to seconds, I would just take away the 50 minutes, and that leaves you with 0 0.024 of a minute, Multiplying it by 60 would give me the seconds, and that's 1.48. So if you wanted, it's 17 minutes, 17 hours, 50 minutes, 1.5 seconds. But it just said, what is it to the nearest minute? So that would be the answer. That's the way you would solve that particular problem to find how long it would take for this material to decay from 40 down to 28. It's actually really straightforward. The only important part is this part here. How do you get rid of the exponential? The inverse of exponential is log, just like the inverse of sine is inverse sine. If you want to remove the exponential, apply the logarithm to the other side. There you go.